about a week ago, OpenAI released ChatGPT, which is a system you can chat with. Now, normally I have my video scheduled a few weeks ahead of time, but I think we need to talk about this tool because ChatGPT actually understands code and I think it shows us a glimpse of what the future of software development is going to look like. What I'll do in this video is show you what it does, how you can use it to improve your coding workflow, and I'll also share some thoughts about the kinds of things we might expect in the future. The old fashioned way of writing code is to actually develop your own code analysis skills. And that's useful for improving your own code, but also analyzing code that's written by others. I have a free workshop on code diagnosis that's going to help you. That's available at arion.codes slash diagnosis. It contains a three factor framework to help you do code reviews more effectively and more efficiently and uses production code, existing libraries that you might actually use yourself to show how it works. So arion.codes slash diagnosis to enroll for free. And I've also put the link in the description of this video. Now, let's dive into ChatGPT. ChatGPT is currently free. This is what the interface looks like. You can basically type questions here and it's going to respond to you. But what's cool is that you can also submit code to it and then ask questions about that code. And that potentially is helpful to your workflow. Today, I'm just going to try a few things and see whether that works. So the first thing where this might be useful is if you have some piece of code that you don't fully understand, perhaps one of your colleagues written it or you wrote it a couple of months ago and you're trying to understand what it is doing. Exactly. Here I have an example of a piece of code from one of my earlier examples called Loom Checksum, and this verifies that the card number actually adheres to the Loom Checksum. So we can copy this code, and then I'm going back to my chat interface, and then I write explain what this function does. And now I'm simply going to paste the code here and let me send that and see what it comes up with. So the explanation to me looks pretty good. It detects that this is the Loon checksum algorithm, and then it actually explains what that is, and it actually notices that this is specifically used for credit card numbers, which is pretty cool. And then it also says something about the structure of the function itself. So it says that, well, it has a digit of function that gets a digit in a card number, and then it calculates the checksum as follows. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask whether this function, loon checksum, that I've used before contains any bugs. And I've intentionally changed the checksum value here from zero to one and see if it figures out that this is actually wrong. Okay, so it didn't find that bug, but it did find suggestions to improve the code. So it simplifies the function by using the map function to compute the sum of the odd and even digits. And then you can remove the digits of function since it's only used in this function itself. And what it also changes is that card numbers should now be a list of integers. Apparently it doesn't know about list lowercase list that you can also use this as a type hint, but that doesn't matter. That's an easy thing to fix. What you can also do is ask the program to write some tests for you. So now I'm going to ask it to write unit test for the loon checksum function. So this is what it comes up with. It created test loon checksum class. It then added three methods, testing a valid number, testing an invalid number, and testing a single digit card number. And here it's, of course, this needs to be false. This needs to be false, and this needs to result in true. And the interface also allows you to copy the code. So what I did is I just took the code that the AI generated, that's the loon checksum function right here, and the class to test it. And now I can actually run this test and see what happens. And we can see that it ran these tests and all of the tests pass. Okay, so just as a sanity check, I've replaced the loon checksum function by my original version, and I've changed the test to actually have strings now instead of list of integers. And now when I run the test, Again, we see that these tests are actually still valid. So it seems it actually created the right unit test for my system and it even covered the most important cases, which is a valid number, an invalid card number, and a wrong single digit card number. So this can actually be pretty useful if you're writing simple functions and you just wanna have some tests and make sure that you cover all the edge cases. You've seen that the chat agent also actively gives you advice on changing the code and making the code better. But you can actually also ask it directly. For example, here I have an employee class that's from one of my earlier examples about code smells. And I've just pasted the code in here and I'm going to add a question. How can I improve the design of this code? And then 
I submit this. And let's see what it comes up with. So let's scroll up. It says you can use typing module to specify the types of the payout parameter and the return value of take holiday method. So actually this is already what I'm sort of doing. So that's not really correct. It just tries to change that a bit and then use string formatting instead of concatenating the strings. So when we look at the example, this uses F strings which I think is actually better than using uh, classic string formatting. But there you also see that it depends very much on the code that the model is trained on. And then another thing, you can use the logging module instead of printing messages. Now this is useful because currently, of course, this is only printing out stuff, but using the logging module is way better. And then let's see, you can move fixed vacation is payout to a separate model and import it. This will make the code easy to read and maintain. Then it says, here's an example how the code could be modified to incorporate these suggestions. So this one is still here, but it did add a logger and then it created the employee class. It changed the type of payout to an optional type, which I guess makes uh, makes sort of sense. So it gives it, gives it a default value. I don't think we have that in the earlier version. No, we didn't. And then it applied the more classic Python formatting, which is not really what we want. Do you have any tips for increasing cohesion of the take a holiday method? Let's see what it responds to this. So I think this is pretty cool. Explains what cohesion is, which is useful. And then it actually recognizes that we should split the method up into two separate methods, one for taking a holiday and one for paying out a holiday. As you can see in this version, we have a big if else statement, if payout, so that's a flag. You should generally avoid that in methods. Then it's going to do this, otherwise it's going to do this. It gives some other tips as well, like use meaningful descriptive method and variable names, make it easy to understand the code, avoid using global constants inside the methods, instead pass the necessary values as parameters, avoid catching and silently ignoring exceptions in the methods. So that's also what you see we were doing here, like try, accept, exception. Of course, this you should never do in Python and actually detects that. So that's pretty cool. And here it suggests the updated code. So we have the two methods now instead of one single method. It has removed the exception. It did introduce again the Python classic formatting, but obviously models like this are going to get better over time and they're going to also make better suggestions. I already think it's pretty amazing that it makes this kind of suggestion. So these are already some examples of how you can use this tool to improve your workflow. You can let it explain pieces of code to you that are not clear. You can use the tool to help you find bugs. You can ask it about the design of your code and suggest improvements. And you can also ask it to write tests for your code. So what does the future look like? Does this mean that basically as developers were out of a job? And what does it mean for me as a content creator? Does it mean that I can just stop making videos because well, the AI knows everything. So you don't need to learn anything anymore about software design. Or maybe I could make other content like, I don't know, just making jokes about Dutch people or something. Although, okay, that's not very funny. So what does this kind of tool say about the future? Well, of course, we already have some of these tools that integrate in some way with our IDE tools like Tab9, GitHub Copilot, which I'm still using by the way. And these already show some of the basic possibilities of how these systems can help you write code more easily by, for example, doing automatic code completion. Now I did a video about GitHub Copilot already a while ago. If you wanna watch that, I've put a link at the top. Now, of course, these models, they're going to become better over the years. An earlier model from OpenAI Codex also gives suggestions. It can explain code, but I feel ChatGPT does a much better job at giving specific suggestions. So there's already within one year, pretty big improvement. And we're going to see more of these improvements over the coming years. So that's really exciting. Now, a chat interface is not the ideal interface for software development. Of course, we'd like these tools to be more naturally integrated into our IDE. So I'm quite sure that this is going to happen over the coming years. Think of IDEs naturally suggesting improvements to your code while you're typing it. For example, you might get some kind of alert that, hey, did you cover this edge case in your function? And if not, would you like me to add the code for that? Or how about you click this button and then I'm going to generate all the unit tests for you. And testing code, you can even take that a couple of steps further. I mean, Hypothesis testing library is already taking steps in that direction where it's going to automatically generate tests for you based on edge cases that it learns. 
And I think AI systems are going to be really helpful for that. Perhaps in a few years, tools like GitHub, Bitbucket, etc., are going to have basically all day running AI systems that check your code for all sorts of bugs and that report these bugs to you, including suggestions of how to fix them. I don't believe this is going to completely replace developers, at least not for the coming five to 10 years. It will probably become a better and better coding assistant that just takes off some of the work. And we already see that in other domains. There's, for example, also jasper.ai that you can use for writing content. And that's just a helpful tool that helps you edit your content. And similarly, this kind of tool is going to be helpful for you to write code faster. In the longer term, these types of tools are going to change your role as a programmer. You're going to focus less on let's say low level coding, but maybe become more of an architect and let the system actually handle the complex cases for you. And that also brings us closer to people who don't particularly have a coding background to still be able to come up quickly with applications or prototypes so they can test whether it's something that they want to develop further. This might also change the way that programming languages work. At the moment, a programming language is basically a set of syntactical constructs, higher level constructs that are translated by an interpreter or a compiler into lower level machine code. The whole goal of the programming language is to make sure that we as developers don't have to type low level machine code. But for an AI system, this is all irrelevant. An AI system can simply learn the model and then generate new outputs. This could mean that programming languages themselves might actually start relying on AI. For example, you could have certain syntax extensions that under the hood don't directly generate machine code, but actually use AI to generate that code. And then the program language is going to get even closer to the way that we think, the way that we communicate. And I'm really curious to see where this is going and how this is going to change software development how this is going to change programming language and the way that we design and write code. I hope you enjoyed this closer look at chat GPT. It's available for free. I've put the link in the description, so check it out. Now it's perhaps still a bit too early to have AI take over your code writing tasks. And there are still a couple of simple things you can do to improve your code. And I did a video about that recently. You can check it out here. Thanks for watching. Take care and see you next week.